How you doing, guys? Uh, a couple things before we get started. First of all, across the street, there's a dude who's working out of a truck, and I think he's getting paid by the hour because he's taking his damn sweet time over there. I've waited half an hour. I'm not going to wait any longer, so there's going to be background noise. It's going to be ugly. I don't even care at this point. I just want to get this through. Uh, sun's really bright, so if you see me squinting and not looking at the camera that much, I'm sorry. The whole thing is that I'm sick, and I feel like... I don't feel like something the cat dragged in, I feel like something the cat dragged back out. Better way to put that. So, I'm actually canceling the other filming that I was going to do, but uh, I want to kick this out to you guys, because I promise this to you guys. And, um, you know, that's that's important to me, I like to keep my promises when I can. So, got questions, and one other thing, I just went through these very quickly. So, if I missed yours, don't feel slighted, don't feel like I'm avoiding you. I just was going through this, going, yeah, it looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Uh, cause I wanted to just get this, I, I just want to get through this guys, honestly, I don't, I really don't feel up to this, so let's just do this thing. Well, actually I kind of already have, uh, the whole WebDog archive, it's a hundred some odd episodes of nothing but tactics stuff. When I was doing tactics, uh, on this channel, somebody's left me feedback saying it looked like I was just going through the motions. And I can't help but concur that, yeah, that's probably about right, cause, you know, I've done all this before. And... The tactics don't change, guys. Sound tactics are sound tactics, and they will be in 10 years, they will be in 20 years, they will be in 30 years. The only thing that's going to change is the technology and how you can apply those tactics. So, you know, go over to the archives. It's all 100% free. It's all right there. Go check those out. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's where all that stuff is. Alright, that was a KP-2. That was a Sheridan uh, wood sock rifle. Uh, kind of like the Piranha Long Barrel that I showed you guys um, in the uh, in the, in the dig. Same basic gun. Uh, longer barrel, had a uh, tube on the side for the paint. Kind of a rare thing to find. I got rid of mine. Uh, how long ago was that? That was a long time ago. Uh, basically, I never really used it, so I sold it off. And... Uh, I don't really regret it, but it was really—it was a good gun, really cool gun. Uh, you don't see them that often anymore, and I think you can still get Hurricanes and such from uh, from Palmer's if you have a stock. I think. Don't quote me on this one. You might you might better to talk to Palmer's on that one, but be prepared to shell out about a thousand bucks. How do the eBay auctions go? Yeah, about that. Um, I mean, they went okay. I'm still kind of amazed that Sandana sold for what it did. But here's the problem with eBay. I just got a bill from them today. Uh, apparently, they've decided to charge 10% um, of the winning fees goes right back to them. And they charge you for that. So, the end result of that is that the money that I raised, the whole purpose of me raising money was to fix the beast that I'm sitting in right now. And I can't. Because eBay has decided to take enough of a chunk away that I can no longer afford to get her fixed. So I'm back, back to square one, essentially. Uh, so eBay has lost a customer. I see no need to give them almost damn near 10% of my money. Um, considering that, it, that's just ridiculous. 10% is, well it's 9%, but. I mean that's $1 out of 10 that they want to take back. And that's just, that's just ridiculous. So uh, if anything else is gonna go for sale, it's gonna be private sales only from this point on. Stupid. Okay, I'm lumping these two together because they're basically the same kind of concept. Um, only really way, only really good way to save money when you're playing paintball is to not spend the money. Yeah, it's kind of a zen moment, yeah. But uh, if you go limited paint or you just go in saying, okay, I'm only going to buy 500 rounds today. Or I'm only going to get, uh, I'm going to play the entire day on 1,000 rounds. Limit it to yourself. And that's going to affect how you play, naturally. But, um, you know, it, it'll be a way that you can save money in playing. As far as anything else goes, I mean, you know, just making money, do what you got to do, basically. Now, the other thing uh, Slotty here is asking about uh, magazine Fed Markers limited round games. I've actually had a great idea with this. It's something I'd love to see Fields actually do. And this is uh, something I would save for the players a little bit of money, but everybody would scream, oh, that sucks. Here's my thought. Uh, you go to the field, and the field says, okay, it costs $50 to play. But here's the catch. Run whatever gun you want to, you get 50 rounds every half hour. That's it. So you can play like a bunch of speedball games very, very quickly or, you know, whatever. But whatever you do with that 50 rounds is up to you. 
So you can take 10 rounds, put it in your stock class gun, give the other 40 rounds to your back guy. Or you can just hold on to it and you know hoard it up to the end of the day and have one really kicking game right at the last game of the day. Doesn't matter. I think this would work out because then there's a fixed cost to the games and everybody knows what it's going to be when you walk in. I'm just saying. Uh, that's, it's just an idea. It's kind of a half-baked idea, but I think it could work out pretty well. Well, it kind of depends on the weather. Um, if I'm playing in midsummer, I'll wear my tiger stripes. Uh, the black sleeve tiger stripes. Actually, that's actually the best thing I own. Best thing I've ever owned. Um, that and the die, like the C7 die pants that I have, absolutely just awesome. About fall, I'll switch over. Um, the other thing that's really good, and I like the uh, the Spec Ops old uh, the old Digicam that they used to sell. That was good too. Um, I, I guess it really just kind of depends on the terrain, where I'm playing, the, the time of year. I played in a t-shirt before, for crying out loud. I played without a t-shirt before. So, I don't need to be wishy-washy, it's just, it depends, you know? Okay, if you don't know what this is, just do a basic search on it, you'll find it. Basically, it's um, the, the biggest thing going on right now, I guess where uh, you, you go in as an individual, you pay like $50 entry fee, they put you on a team, and then you play in this pickup tournament, essentially. And sometimes there's a pro player involved, sometimes there's not, I don't even know sometimes. Uh, but here's the thing, and this is what really bothers me about it, let's just call it what it is. It's walk-on play. Say it with me, folks, it's walk-on play. That's all it is. In a way, I think this is the paintball industry finally admitting that paintball is not a team sport, that it's all about the individual, it's all about your glory, it's all about you being awesome, you kicking ass, you being the guy that's going to make the difference, it's all about you, we're selling the gear to you, we don't want anybody else, we want you, we want to accept you, it has nothing to do with the rest of the team, it's all about you. That's what the Streetball series really hammers home to me, is that it has nothing to do with team, it has to do with you, selling to you. And you guys are going to want to buy this, seriously. I mean, it costs twice the amount, it costs more, like double the amount that walk-on play costs. And you guys are eating this up. You guys are loving this. I don't get it. I really don't get it. But, you know, but basically, it's not an individual glory. And, you know, once you understand that. So, I'm going to give you guys an old school idea. Something that, it's not mine. A bunch of fields used to do this back in the day. The way that it works is that everybody shows up for a walk-on day. And at the beginning of every game, you reach into a hat, you pull out your team color. So you're red or you're blue, you go along or whatever. And then after the game's over, you take your armband off, put it back in the hat, reload, come back out, grab another armband. And keep randomizing the, it, it seems to random the entire day. Here's the catch. Everybody's name is on a big board. And every time you win a game, every time your team wins a game, you get a check mark next to your name. And one or two games, you can kind of get by. But by the time you get to about the 10th, the 12th, the 15th game, you start seeing a pattern. And that's how they determined who the best player was. It's one of the really cool things from the old school days. And I'm waiting for somebody to actually rediscover that. Because one moment that they do, I think that's going to be the big tournament format. That's going to take off like wildfire. And come to think of it, if you're in the Midwest and you run a paintball field, let me know. I will help you guys run this game if you guys give me a, a percentage of the profit. This car ain't going to fix itself, you know. The absolute worst. Just snapping my ankle count. I'm actually kind of serious about that. I, I snapped my ankle playing one time. Not fun. Um, invite them. I'm, I'm actually kind of being serious when I say that because um, a lot of women don't want to play because they feel intimidated. Uh, not necessarily like, oh my god, they're gonna kill me. Just why am I walking into this boys' club? And I actually want you guys to think about this next time you go play. Uh, make mental notes on how many times people just casually swear. How many times people are dropping the F-bomb. How many times people are just swearing in general. How many times somebody refers to their paintball gun as a POS. That kind of thing. Take note of that because, you know, that, that, that's something that women don't really get a kick out of. You know, casual swearing, that's not what they do. So if you want to get more women to come out and play, just, you know, invite them to come out and play. And don't coddle them. Just, you know help them out as much as you can it's just you know and the big thing is just you know be a gentleman don't be a jackass maybe that's the best way to put it a lot quieter 
And uh, I, I can actually kind of prove this one too. If you go, um, I'll try to link to it. Uh, but if you go to watch the 90, the 94 World Cup, which was actually filmed in 93 when it was done out in the woods, um, this has been mirrored a couple times on YouTube, which I ripped originally with uh, Jerry Brown's permission. Uh, but if you listen to those games, you got 20 guys out on that field, and it's quiet. Uh, the opening, the opening salvo is kind of loud, but it is quiet compared to five on five these days with the constant yelling and screaming and all that. So yeah, the games they were quieter, a lot more, a little more subdued. But um, you know, that just comes with the territory, I guess. Not nearly as spectacular as we thought it was. It was, um, Skyball was actually a fairly average tournament. Once you got over the fact that we're playing in the Sky Dome, once we got through that, it was like, oh, I guess it's just another tournament. All right, that's, that's, that's fine, nothing, nothing spectacular. They didn't do anything original or unique with it. They had an opportunity, they really did. But they, um, it was basically a five on five tournament in the Sky Ball, in the Sky Dome. And that was, that was about it. But the biggest convenience was that if you stayed at the hotel in the Sky Dome, you didn't have to walk very far to get to the fields, but um, it was just, um, just a five-man tournament. I mean, you could do that same tournament anywhere in the country for a lot cheaper. Well, I, I've got a lot of those, um, and I could make those into war stories themselves, but um, let me just kind of do a quick one here, if you will. Uh, I was playing at this one field in Illinois that's a random stuff thrown all over the place field. And you probably played at least one of these places in your life where it looks really cool. The, f the field itself is not symmetrical just because of the design, they just couldn't do symmetrical. So you just had, they, they just threw a bunch of stuff out there and said, okay, let's go. Like, um, like a car, boats, uh, random pallets, that kind of thing. And um, I was the old man at the field. The, uh, the guy who was doing the, uh, the, um, the uh, orientation stuff, he looked at my, uh, my waiver and said, wow, dude. You're like ancient. I'm like, thanks. Can I just play now? And uh, because of that, he was calling me the old man. <laughs> and uh, the um, the other kids on the field. I mean, when I say kids, I'm talking like 13, 15 year old kids. Um, one of them, they were decided to do ca team captains, and it was the two young kids, and they chose their teams. And when we got to the uh, the flag station, we we're just playing, uh, you know, standard shoot 'em up, basically. And they all look at me and say, okay, what's the game plan? And I look down at the kid and say, I don't know, Captain, what's the game plan? And his eyes just lit up. You know, that was like the best thing that had happened to him all week. And, um, you know, the game plan worked in spite of him. <laughs> you know, I, I don't expect 13-year-olds to know Sun Tzu, is what I'm saying here. But, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, I got a lot of stories like that. But I'll save those for, like, full-blown war stories. Not for a Q and a thing like this. All right. First of all, it's kind of a loaded question. Um, anytime that you are bringing in terms like dying, death, uh, things like that, you're making an emotional statement. And you know, so oh, it's just, you're just being you're just being a jerk. It's just semantics. But uh, no, it's it's very emotional thing. When you say, "Oh my God, paintball's dying," you know, that's that, that carries a lot of emotional weight to it. But I think the question is: is paintball is paintball coming on a decline? And yeah, it's, it's a roller coaster ride. It always has been. There's ups and downs constantly. And uh, right now we're kind of on a downswing, which I'm okay with, honestly. Um, what it just means is that it gives the it's kind of giving the players, the, the player base, and the industry a chance to kind of take stock, realize, okay, we can't take this for granted. It's not always going to be you know a money train. It's not always going to be you know up 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 up. So let's make this game a little better. Let's get some people back in here. And then when people start coming back in, they're going to be like, oh, we can just, you know, coast for a little while. And the moment they start coasting, straight back down. So, yeah, that's just part of the cycle. But as far as dying goes, uh, seeing that paintball is not a sentient being, I don't think it's dying. It's just, you know, it's, it's been on a decline. And I don't see it really going anywhere. It's like, as far as, like, you know, going away, no, I don't, I don't see it. You know, the whole idea of gun whoring, I think people have it wrong, honestly. Because a lot of times you talk about people gun whoring, they're saying, oh, that guy's a gun whore. You know, he's got like 500 million guns and that he's a gun whore. No. no, 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 no. You see, to me, gun whoring would be a rental field. Because, well, without being crude and crass, the field owner would be like pimp, right? 
and then he'd be pouring out the guns, letting somebody use it for a couple hours, and then he comes back, and you get paid money to do that. And then they just kind of hose them, hose them off, and ship them right back out the next day. So, uh... <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble for that, but I really don't care at this point. Um, I would like to do more. I really would. Um, I've got a couple in the pipe, as far as DVDs go, uh, paintball ones. But the biggest problem is that YouTube tends to throw hissy fits. Um, if you are doing any kind of a review of music or video or anything like that, they go, oh my god, it's not... <laughs> You know, they don't, they don't understand the, the whole fair use thing, or more correctly, they are hypersensitive to fair use because uh, the whole water music thing and all that. Yeah, that's still on, guys. Sorry. Um, ever since uh, ever since the Martin Luther King stuff has been pulled off because of uh, Warner Music Group. Yeah. Anyway, um, so if I do them, if I do them, they're probably going to be hosted on Blip. Although that kind of reminds me, if you are one of the regular viewers, and um, you want to head over to blip.tv, you can actually subscribe to the WebDog channel on Blip TV now. So um, I would highly recommend you do that. You know, get it first. Uh, it's also shared on the Facebook stuff too, so you can see it there too. But if you want to subscribe, you can do that. But uh, that being said, yeah, I would like to do some more of the DVD reviews. Um, I got a couple extra, like I said. Um, I need to actually talk to Smiley and uh, get my old tapes back, get my old VHS tapes back. Uh, but. Uh, if I can do that, I will. Okay, both of these are kind of related. Um, I will do them in order. Uh, what inspired me to do these? Um, well, because there's a lot of stories to tell. And, you know, playing the game is one thing. You know, everybody plays the game, and everybody has their own war stories to tell. And if, if you talk to anybody, there is an art to telling the war story about... 50% of it is lies, and 50% of it is what you think happened and didn't. So I figured, you know, this could be entertaining. So I started uh, digging into the old vaults and going back for that. Now as far as how do I remember all these things, I actually keep a diary. Uh, not like a dear diary, this thing sucks. <laughs> um, and a lot of times with that, is a lot of it is, is to just me trying to... Um, I was trying to make myself a better player, so I was kind of taking stock of, okay, where am I getting hit? Well, I'm getting hit over here a lot. Okay, what does that tell me? That tells me I'm exposing this way too much. So you look at the, you look at that, and it kind of joggle, it kind of jogs the mind, you know, jiggles the memory a little bit, and you kind of like, okay, I can, uh, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do here. You know, change it up. So I'm not, and the, I look at old photos, and it brings back a bunch of memories. I got photos that go back to the 90s easily. I got, um, actually, I got some photos from like '94. Um, that uh, I might show you guys one of these days, the old uh, the old Sam's game when it was 800 people. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of ways you can kind of do that. Um, that's how I do it. This kind of goes back to what I was just talking about here, about the, you know, keeping a, keeping a mental diary thing. Even if you don't have, um, like, a physical diary, you know, just kind of take stock of how many times you're getting hit and where you're getting hit and what the circumstances were. And then, you know, after the day's over, you're going to have time to take stock and go, okay, wow, I was getting shot in the head way too much. Okay, so what was I doing wrong? I was getting shot here too much. I was getting, you know, this and that. Or for about a year and a half, I was, I was consistently 30 seconds late to the party. Consistently. I would flank out to the side. I would start crawling. And by the time I get to where I need to be, party's over. And my guys are already rolling through. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So what that told me was speed up. <laughs> So, I mean, that, that's just way, without shooting a single ball, if you critique your own play, you can make yourself a lot better player. Now, as far as um, things like snap shooting and stuff goes, you can actually do a little bit of muscle memory, too. Um, grab your gear, put on all the stuff that you play and you know, practice as you play kind of thing, um, and then get behind your couch. You're going to feel like an idiot, but it does work. Um, get behind your couch and practice snap shooting. Don't go full speed. The idea is you're just trying to get the motion down and come back. Get the motion down and come back. And this is going to build in your brain. So it's called muscle memory, I think. Um, you guys want to do the research, you can. But uh, essentially, it's training your body to just work so that your you can your brain can just say, do it. And you don't have to think about it. You're just going to roll out, snap, and come back in. But again, the reason you're doing it slow for the first bunch of times is that you want to get all the body mechanics down and then slowly speed it up. Best way to go. 
So, um, yeah, a couple, a couple tips to uh, make yourself a little better as far as without firing a single shot. All right, so we will call it at that. So um, thank you guys very much for your questions. I appreciate it very much. Um, again, if I missed your question this time, I do apologize for that, but um, I'm really not feeling up to doing that. This is already going to be a heck of a lot of more editing than I want to do. Um, so, yeah, just give you an idea on that. So, um, we'll do another Q&A down the road. We got, I got a bunch of other uh, From the Vault stuff already filmed, ready to go. Um, and I got a bunch of other things too. So, uh, we'll catch you guys next time.